What's going on, BFL fam? I'm Carlos. This is Maya. Hello. I'm here at Scent Bar, Lucky Scent, in New York City. They just recently opened here about... We opened on October 1st. October 1st. I consider Lucky Scent the mecca of perfume, online perfume shopping. That's where I bought all my samples when I first got into the niche world. And uh, thanks for all the samples and thanks for all the uh, great curations that Franco and... Adam. Adam have put together for this great store. Maya's gonna go through some exclusives that are just for Lucky Sun. Yeah, so we've got four here. The first of which uh, is called I Love YY by Bogue Perfumery. Okay. It's really an homage to New York City and it opened up with the launch of our store. Mm -hmm. So it features Ylang Ylang, which is why it's called I Love mm -hmm. YY. Um, and it also has tonka bean, violet leaf, grapefruit. It's a really ripe ylang ylang. It's mm -hmm. very camphorous. Uh, really That's special. Um, What's the perfumer's name? Antonio Gardone yes. is the perfumer. He's there. done one of the, um, he did T-Rex. He did T-Rex. For as well as He did Douleur, which is a new one mm -hmm. out of both perfumery as well. So yeah, give that a try. Awesome. He really meant it as a kind of homage to the city. That's very nice. It's different. It's very full. It kind of reminds me of kind of a vintage type of fragrance. Absolutely. But not entirely. I've smelled some of his work and it's usually very potent, hefty. This has a softer side mm -hmm. of his floral. work. Yeah. So that's very nice. Yeah, it's very, really nice. Recently, we worked with Dmitry Bortnikov, a Bortnikov fragrance, and he formulated this beautiful mm -hmm. fragrance called Lucky Oud, which is essentially a chocolate oud, but really means to feature Thai lotus flower. It's really beautiful. It is, it is an animalic scent, as many ouds can be. So this is the bottle of Post. An exclusive for Lucky Scent. Yeah, we only have about a hundred bottles, so it's pretty rare. I smell the chocolate. Mm -hmm. I smell the yeah. oud, and it's definitely a little animalic, but not overly. Mm -hmm. I think that the chocolate kind of masks that. And has some sandalwood in there. So this is nice. I haven't smelled anything until today from this brand and I've been dying to because I've been seeing everybody talking about it. There's even a Facebook group dedicated to Bartnikoff perfumes. If you don't know that Bartnikoff, there's a Facebook group about your perfumes, big fans of yours. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah. And I think it would probably smell better, that goes without saying most things, on skin because I could see this warming on skin and just becoming a part. It develops really skin. beautifully. I can imagine. So this one from Fort and Manly out of mm -hmm. Australia, Miraki, is an homage to the notorious, sort of infamous Nombre Noir fragrance from okay. Shiseido that essentially encountered all of these difficulties in its rollout, that it was sort of scrapped. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really, really beautiful scent. Rase Fort. Yes, I was going to say, shout out to Rase. And uh, yeah, that's a gorgeous Osmanthus scent. 
And lately, I have been in love with Osmanthus. Yeah, this is very aldehydic as well. That's really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. Bergamot. But not pretty in a, it's for girls way. It's just really pleasant and uh, I know a lot of his work. Yeah. And I, I do dig his work. It's packaged really thoughtfully. And again, this is fairly rare. We only have about 300 bottles of that one. What's this called? Miraki. Miraki. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And then last up, this is our collaboration with Parlez-moi de Parfum out of France. It's called Mile High. And here the star is Corsican Immortelle flower. Mm -hmm. But there's also a pineapple note that really punches it up. It makes it really bright and fruity. That Immortelle. <laughs> yes. I have to say that I'm not the biggest fan of Immortelle because on my skin, it goes kind of curry smelling. Oh, interesting. I love to you eat don't curry, like but I don't like to smell <laughs> like curry. Okay, sure. So I do detect it here a little bit. The pineapple is kind of candied. It's very sweet. Yeah. It's... But it is not any way know how like Aventus, because as soon as people hear pineapple, oh, they probably so like Aventus. Aventus. true, yeah. Not, there's no Aventus here. Mm -hmm. That's real nice. Yeah. It's also got some Tonka. Yeah, it's really pretty. Cool. So those are the exclusives. You have some stuff that just came in. We do. Uh, so here from Parfum de Nicolai, we just got in this fragrance, Angelis Pear. And this one is a beautiful floral pear fragrance. Mm -hmm. It's got bergamot, pear, and patchouli. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. As VJ was saying, pear is typically a girly type fragrance or feminine type fragrance. I don't care. I would rock that. That smells really, really like nice. It? I'm glad. There's bergamot and pear patchouli, which is not particularly strong in here. No, the patchouli is not going to hammer you over the head. Yeah. I do like that. Mm -hmm. And then also new from Zoologist out of Canada. This is the famous bee, <clears throat> which is a very faceted honey scent, sort of waxy as well. What do you think of that? I have this at home. <laughs> I haven't done a Full review yet. <laughs> so without giving away too much of my review, I think that this is a really nice scent. It's an artistic scent. I don't think it's a crowd pleasing scent, but people who appreciate independent perfumery will like this. Honey is the star of this fragrance for sure, in my opinion. Beeswax is Absolutely. definitely going on here. and. Uh, I got a pollinus effect, if that makes any sense. I can't describe that word, but I know what I'm smelling. It's a pollinus hazy thing on the initial spray. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the ride is uh, honey and then some incense and stuff in the dry down. Right. So we actually just got this house in store. I think it just launched. It's called Anonyme. And essentially the conceit here is that the perfumer wishes to remain totally anonymous, mm -hmm. but these Three fragrances feature ambergris in different forms. So gold ambergris, silver ambergris, and black, black. ambergris. Um, they're really interesting. You know, I am just smelling these for the first time as well. So we can discover this together. So this is gold. I just got these yesterday and I posted on social everyone, media. <laughs> everyone. Yeah, I guess the perfumer is really looking for the fragrances to speak for themselves. This is gold, you said? That one was gold, yeah. Okay. This one's slightly fruitier, silver. Mm -hmm. And here we've got black. Silver and black are the ones I prefer. Mm -hmm. The gold one is funky, animalic for those fans. There are plenty of you who love that kind of stuff. You don't like animalics? Mm, it depends. It depends. Not too many, but some I do, but, mm -hmm. but not typically. Yeah. I mean, I said I would wear that pear fragrance, so <laughs> you know what kind of mm -hmm. head I'm in. Yeah. I like the black and silver, probably silver the best. This seems a little smoky. 
The black. Yeah. Yeah. The silver is warm yet metallic at the same time, if that makes any sense. Sure. What do you think? Don't agree with me just because you're on the channel. No, I do pick up the metallic note that you're describing. I think it's interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and what else? We just got a full collection out of Thailand. Mm -hmm. Let's go over here to grab one of those. This is Stranger's Perfumery. This scent is called Salted Green Mango. All of these little scents have lots of notes. So this one, little bitter orange. In the little I mean, they're bottle. 30 ml. They come okay. in 30 ml. Not to you know diminish the quality. They're just <laughs> small in physical I size. I figured that's what you meant. Yeah, so bitter orange, rose, pomelo, mango, obviously. Really interesting. It's funny because I don't find this overly fruity. It's not. It's not at all. <laughs> It's not at all. This is different. I can't relate it to another fragrance that I've smelled. It doesn't mm -hmm. smell reminiscent. That's original. I mean, it's got a seaweed note, which I think you can detect. Maybe I'll just That kind better. of prevents it from being cloying. That's different. I like that. Yeah. Interesting. And then the same perfumer has another brand out of Thailand called Parfum Prisana. And this one is called Tom Yum, which I can only assume is based off of the Tom Yum soup, the famous delicious Thai soup. So this has got kefir. Lemongrass is, I think, the really big note here. And the perfumer clearly likes smaller bottles. Yeah, 30 <laughs> mLs. But a lot of people have been asking for those sizes recently, I think, for collectors, if they don't want to commit to a 100 mL bottle. And that's right. absolutely correct. Yeah. That's nice. It's a Kind of reminding me of like ginger, like the way the snappiness of ginger smells, mm -hmm. but in a, you told me before, lemongrass. Yes. Very, very much heavy on the lemongrass lime. Yeah, that's nice. So this is out of what kind? Thailand. Thailand. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for this run through. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. If you're in New York City, come by and see Maya. Yeah, she would love Maya. to help you. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you at the next video. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.